Well, thank you very much. <laughs> I want to thank ICC, first of all, for allowing me to be here, uh, allowing me to fill in this space with all of these strange uh, foreign objects, uh, uh, things that you'll learn about today. Um, I want to thank Chris Gothier, uh, the uh, gallery director. Um, uh, he has such a vision for this room. Um, he wants to revivify it, and uh, he has a lot of wonderful plans. And so this is uh, the beginning of what, what the Cube Gallery could be. Um, so uh, today we're, we're featuring filmmaking, um, and there will be other things uh, that, uh, that Chris will be featuring, uh, such as um, the, the maker space. That's something that we were talking about here in Peoria. Um, so uh, it's quite exciting, quite exciting to know that uh, uh, there are great things happening here at ICC and great things happening uh, in this gallery. Um, so my name is William Jacobs. Uh, I'm a local filmmaker. I grew up in Peoria. Um, I began making films, to answer your question. Uh, when I was seven, um, I had a stop-motion animation kit uh, that Lego had made uh, that worked with Windows uh, 98. So I had this old uh, boxy computer that uh, used floppy disks, and uh, my parents were gracious enough to allow me to set up a table in the basement where I can have this Lego city or this Lego set and um, dream and, and manipulate the limbs of these little figures and take photographs frame by frame where you simulate motion. And, um, so that was my introduction to filmmaking. Um, I've been a self-taught filmmaker. Uh, it's been a journey. I've, I've had this dream to work with this old medium, relatively old medium. It's not exactly old. It's still very relevant and used in the industry today. Um, you can go on Kodak's website and you can see a list of all of these productions still using film. Arguably, it, it stands the test of time. It's, it can be scanned indefinitely. And, um, so I, I've entered 60 millimeter film uh, just recently, two years ago. Uh, I acquired a camera, uh, not this camera exactly, but this is a 16 millimeter camera. With the help of the Peoria community, I was able to raise some funds to acquire this, to make this short film, uh, which I'll be talking about here in a moment. My reason for transitioning to the 16 millimeter format is because of the process. Um, I think we have lost some of the traditions of cinema. The traditions are there to uh, unite the cast and crew and, and to also um, establish certain uh, principles with, within the creation of, 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 of a film. Film, unlike digital, is, is extremely fragile as a, as a format. It's uh, susceptible to damage by just handling it with your fingers, touching it. You can mar the footage that way. Uh, of course, it's light sensitive, so you have to transport the, the film in these light, tight film canisters, and you have to load film magazines and dark bags. And, and so you're working mostly blind, and uh, you, you, you cannot uh, see the final image that you create until after it's gone through development. And there's a lot of risk involved. It's, it's dangerous, um, but it requires faith, faith in your, your knowledge, uh, your competence, uh, faith in your cast and crew, faith in, in the project, and in trusting that things will come to fruition um, because you've prepared as much as you can prepare for a film to tell this particular story. I'm more interested in the asceticism of 16 millimeter filmmaking than the aesthetics. Uh, there's a resurgence, and it, I think it's because there's this need amongst youth to, to have consequences while creating a project. With digital, you can film indefinitely. If you make a mistake, you can easily press record again. So there's this indolence that has arisen out of digital filmmaking. Both are, are valid mediums. I'm not saying one is superior over the other. So behind me is a um, mock film set from, from this short film. And this project that we shot is called A Moment Is Enough. It's an excerpt of a uh, feature film I like to make here in Peoria entitled Poet in a Modern World. Uh, there are brochures here. You can read a little bit more about the story. Um, I'll try to be succinct as possible. Um, the story follows a, a disoriented young student who uh, develops a mentorship with uh, uh, his instructor. Who, who teaches an art class, and uh, this instructor is having a difficult time trying to communicate what beauty is, this ideal we have turned away from, and we've, we have taken off of the pedestal and replaced with a question mark. And so this, this art instructor is uh, trying to uh, navigate through, through the, uh, the, the modern world along with this, his student, and both of them 
come together and help each other find resolve to discover what real hope is in an age of moral decay and political upheaval. Ultimately, they discover there is something beyond politics. There's something beyond uh, this world that we ought to be striving after. This excerpt, uh, A Moment is Enough, um, takes place during uh, the middle of the story, and it follows the young student who is uh, wandering around alone in his home, and uh, he, he conjures this uh, past muse of his with his imagination, and the fantasy begins with her turning on this projector he has in, the, in his room, which plays this short film that he made on, on film, and then they enter this dialogue, and that can be viewed on uh, the Morning Dove Films website, if you're curious about that. Um, you can see what 16 millimeter film looks like. Uh, there's some little footage uh, presented on this, on this uh, screen here, showing what, what we shot. So the feature film will begin production this winter. We raised some funds. I had an Indiegogo fundraiser, and we were able to raise $800, which enables us to, to shoot a few scenes this winter. And, I'll end here and open the floor for questions. I don't always storyboard, but with this particular project, given that we're using film, I needed to know exactly the shots I wanted to capture. Um, so that was very helpful to have the storyboards there and to communicate your vision to other people, too. Um, and that's a very difficult thing. And one of the plights that filmmakers face is communicating the vision. You have a dream, you dream it up, you have these images in your head, but other people are not in your head. They cannot see what you're seeing. They cannot be as passionate for these images that, that you, you have dreamed up as much as you are. So that's one of the tasks, one of, one, one of the toilsome tasks is to try to communicate that vision to such a potent degree that it, it, you can lead people into bringing that to fruition. The beauty about 16 millimeter filmmaking is, in contrast with digital filmmaking, is that it encourages you to embrace mistakes. We had a lot of technical problems that arose on set. Things broke down. <laughs> I had a snow machine that failed and that was rigged outside of this gable door. And I was frustrated, but then I realized I'm going to humble myself. I'm going to allow this project to be what it wants to be. Allow myself to be informed. And with digital filmmaking, you're more recalcitrant and less willing to, to listen to the voice of your project that's trying to direct you. Because you can quickly rectify mistakes, shooting isn't as expensive. With, with celluloid filmmaking, you can't really afford mistakes, but when they do happen, you, you're, you're more comforted by them. Then you come to realize it makes the film better. It, it, it introduced something that I never would have conjured up in my head. You are in collaboration with some, some external force, and I, I don't want to get into the meta metaphysics of that, but 16 millimeter filmmaking certainly opens the door to new possibilities. Again, I don't believe any medium is superior than the other, but I'm, I'm blathering on now. So, <laughs> are there any other questions, sir? Wes, would you have anything to contribute? Because you, you were part of the project, he was the actor. Yeah, it was a marvelous uh, experience. It was amazing what feat this one man assembling all of this and putting it together with the help of some dedicated people. Uh, it was a very intense experience uh, uh, to step into the role and uh, under the constraints of the medium and the pressures of the medium. Uh, Will had done a standing job directing it. And um, one thing that talking about the differences between digital and film. It was very, for me as a performer, it was very grounding to be working on film because there were no monitors, there was no... I, I did a film earlier this summer and it was very, very digital with all the cables and the monitors and, the, it, and it just felt more synthetic, it felt more... Um, but but his, his project, this project, it felt more grounded, it felt more terrestrial, more that there was flesh and blood in it, and uh, we couldn't just watch the footage back after we took it. We just had to do a couple of takes and then trust, trust the moment. Uh, the film is called A Moment is Enough, and you can view it online uh, and grab those materials and such. But uh, that A Moment is Enough, the film is made up of moments that 
where we had to have be uh, disciplined and Will really guided us to for, for it to be what it needed to be to happen. There's a lot I can say about it, but um, uh, it was a real miracle, a real miracle that it came together because the technology was, the camera was from the mid 1970s, and uh, a lot of, a lot more could have gone wrong than did go wrong. And so that's a testament to uh, to God and to the to Will's expertise and tenacity, as well as the other members of the crew who brought it to life. And you can hear the uh, other thing about the filming. You can hear the sound of the camera mm. during the filming. You can hear, the, you hear that sound <laughs> played a moment ago. It was a very magical, uh, kind of eerie experience. Yeah. Yeah. I keep thinking it's popular to state. Uh, yeah. It's a set of nuts. Yeah. Yeah. You want to explain that? Yeah. Okay. You were like, yeah. You yeah. can argue about that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I believe that an artist has to take on responsibility. They have to re be responsible for what they're creating because. Art, in, it, art, art shapes our world, it shapes our culture. And we have to make sure that we are in alignment, that we are um, creating virtuously and understanding that we are going to be sharing something with the world and it ought to be something worthwhile and it ought to be something that will edify people and be fruitful uh, to help people. Um, that's my particular understanding of art. Um, that could be a point of contention. However, I think your environment as an artist has uh, tremendous influence over, over what you're creating. I'm someone who, who wants to be disciplined, who, who wants limitations, because once we take away those limitations, anything is possible, and then if anything is possible, nothing is. And we can easily lose ourselves if we don't have some sort of framework to operate within. I need 16 millimeter filmmaking because it provides a rigid framework. I like to have a stable ground to stand on when I'm creating. I, I don't want anything <laughs> that's going to shift over time. And I don't want anything that, uh, that allows me to slip into indolence either. So um, regarding asceticism, considering the fragility of film, which is a reflection of our own fragility as human beings, there, there is something sacred about that process of creating with this particular format because you're holding something very vulnerable in your hands. It's much like holding a child in your hands. And you want to make sure that you raise this child properly and that you tr do your utmost to access the potential and this being and this thing and this film and this art and to, to manifest that. I want those conditions to enjoin me to discipline myself and to, to enjoin others. And I think that's really what unifies people, the restrictions and, and the boundaries. And it keeps us from wandering astray, that we have something we can always go back to rely on. And for me, it's that tradition of 60 millimeter film. It's that sound of the film running through the camera. Everybody is hearing that. That's the, one of the unifying forces that's held in mind. Oh, there is something very vulnerable occurring right now. I need to make sure that I'm giving my best and that I'm, I'm helping foster this project. So, well, with digital filmmaking, the camera is, is not conscious in people's minds. And people can forget that there is a camera, that there is some miraculous event occurring where light en enters this lens and, and hits this sensor and, and it generates a 0101 code which creates this image. And, um, that isn't really in mind when, when you're working with the digital format. Uh, but I digress. I will say this. Uh, da Vinci thought that the eye was the most sacred part of, of the body because that's where the universe came to one point. And we're working with a lens that operates like our eye. And we are taking the universe and we're putting it into one frame multiple frames, 24 frames per second. We're creating these moments and we're trying to 
redeem time with those moments, to show people something worthwhile, something beautiful, something that will help people to, to endure whatever suffering they're enduring, to, to, to help them transfigure their own life. And, but I'll, I'll stop there. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. a religious fanatic. I don't want the world to lose its beauty. <laughs> <laughs>